Hey guys, welcome to another video and I'm going to show you how to record a demo song in GarageBand on the iPad, the absolute basics from start to finish, how to do it in steps, okay? And all we're going to use is the iPad, a pair of headphones and an acoustic guitar. We're going to use the built-in mic on the iPad and we're going to record a typical singer-songwriter type song but we're going to get an electric distorted type guitar sound on this even though we're using an acoustic guitar, okay? So all we're using is the iPad, headphones and an acoustic. All right, um, let's go for it. So here's the iPad, uh, which I'm capturing on my desktop. This is my desktop mouse, and from time to time in this tutorial, I'm gonna point to certain things that you touch, right, using my desktop mouse. Okay, so when you don't have a song running in GarageBand, this is what the screen looks like. You're either going to be in Recent, where you can touch and load a recent song, or Browse, which shows you some recent songs on the right, and on the left there are different locations where you can browse and search for songs to load. And in either of these views, to create a new song, you just touch that blue cross up there. Or if you're in Browse, like here, you can touch this big Create Song icon. Right. So we'll make a new song. And we're going to be doing a songwriter type song and when you're doing a songwriter type song whether it's folk or country or more indie or more leaning towards rock indie with a heavier guitar you're going to want an acoustic type drummer and so the best thing to use is the drummer tracks GarageBand on iPad has drummer tracks exactly the same as in Logic right so we scroll across to drummer tracks we choose acoustic drums and here we can see the default drummer Kyle with all the drum editing stuff under here and you see this yellow piece of drumming the, di the, tr the triangle shapes of the kicks and snares right and this piece of yellow drumming goes right across this eight bars that you see across the top eight bars and to the right of that is a plus we touch this plus always to get into the sections menu and we're looking at section A the default opening section the way that GarageBand on iPad works is you build your song out of sections and you bolt them together to make the whole length of your song, right? So here's section A, the default starting section, and all sections by default are eight bars long. But if you touch where it says eight bars, you can adjust the length of the section to be any length you want. But the default is eight bars because most songs are made out of eight bar blocks. And by the way, it's automatic well, you'd switch that on if you wanted to say, just record yourself on a mic, singing and playing a song of yours all the way through. You would switch this to automatic, set up a microphone track, hit record, play your song and sing it all the way through, hit stop at the end, and that section would be as long as you recorded for. But we're going to build our song out of sections, and uh, I'm going to leave this first default section A in the default length of eight bars like that. Right? So there's our section at eight bars long, and so when you create a drummer track, it puts the drumming right across that section, regardless of how long the section is. In this case, it's eight bars, so there's eight bars of drumming across. And then we edit, with the drum edit here, the drumming to get the drumming that we want. Right now, you can touch on the head of the drummer, and there are other drummers to try. You can go through them all. They've all got a different style, different kits. Each drummer you load has presets. You can go through them and try them use them as is or use them as a starting point to tweak uh, and you can also build your patterns from scratch and the way you do it is um, this is the fill control that puts fills in the piece of drumming that you're editing so I'll turn that right down and you build your pattern out of layers you have a kick and snare layer you choose the pattern for the kick and snare then you have a timekeeping layer which can be either hi-hat toms or the ride cymbal and that's the stick the drummer keeps time with, like ding, 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 or ding, 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 or whatever, right? So you combine your kick and snare pattern with your timekeeping layer pattern, hi-hat, toms, or ride. And if you want to, you can put a further percussion layer over the top, tambourine, shaker, or claps in the case of this particular drummer, and choose a pattern for that, okay? So I'm going to go with pattern five for my kick and snare, pattern two for my hi-hat, and then we use this loudness softness complex simple ball to adjust our beat if you make it very quiet more towards soft like that the drummer will play side sticks instead of real snare hits this is now at 50 percent loudness 
And if you make it really loud, the drummer starts playing rim shot heavier snares and more splashy uh, hats and all the rest of it. Like that. So a good starting point is to put your loudness at about 75% and then notch it back from 50% complexity. The more complex you make it, that bring, means that the drummer will bring in more and more kicks as you move the ball this way and less and less kicks that way. So I'm going to start with my ball about there and with my kick and snare on pattern 5 and my hat on pattern 2, this is the beat that I get. Okay, so you get a beat that's got the right groove for your, for your song. And then you go to the cogwheel settings icon there, touch that to get into settings, and now we can adjust our tempo there. You can drag up and down, you can tap with the arrows to go up and down the tempo, or you can tap tempo by tapping on that block where it says tap to set tempo. So my song is going to be like da 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 like that. About 160 beats per minute. Uh, I'm going to go to about 158. So I've got the right groove at the right speed. And that's what you're looking for. Also in that cogwheel, you've got your um, metronome and counting, but just leave that. It's fine as it is. It's, it's set up just right. You've also got um, your time signature here. If you happen to be working outside of 4-4, you've got the choice of 3-4 or 6-8, but nearly all songs are in 4-4. And you've got your key signature, but don't worry about that. All right, that's the only thing to pay attention to here if you're working in 4-4, is just to set your tempo. So you set your tempo, right? Get the pattern right for the groove of the song, set your tempo, and there it is. Okay, that's done. Now, I don't need to record this drumming onto the track with other instruments that you can bring up in GarageBand on iPad. You work out what you're going to play, and there's a record button up here. You hit record and play in and record that instrument over the section. But with the drummer tracks, once, once you set up a drummer track, it puts the drumming across the section, whatever the length of that section is. You tweak it, and that's it. There's no need to record it in. So we're all done. The pattern's set at the right tempo for the song. Uh, that's been set as well. And now we go to tracks, which is this icon here, uh, like a bunch of stacked regions, right? So that's to go to tracks. And there is our drumming track with the drumming right across our first section, section A, which is eight bars long. Like that, okay? Now, that is going to be my eight bars of intro. So I go to sections by touching that plus at the end of the bars and beats across the top. And there's section eight. Right now, we duplicate it. And that makes another section bolted on after A called B. It's a copy of A. So now we've got section A, which is my eight bars of intro. Then section B, the first half of my verse, the same drumming as the intro. Duplicate that again. We've now got section C. Intro eight bars, verse eight bars, second half of the verse eight bars. And the drumming on the intro and the verse is all the same. And now finally I take the section C and duplicate it again to make section D, and this is going to be my first chorus. Now once you've got more than one section and you're in this section selector here, you can choose any individual section and then touch on the background or touch on the plus again to get rid of the section menu. And in this case, I've chosen section D, it's highlighted. So the track error zooms in and just shows me section D and I could record something over section D to add to the drums. But once we've got more than one section, we can choose all sections and then we see all the sections. Intro, verse, verse, first chorus. Now what I've done is I've taken the intro drumming, it's the same for the verse, same for the second half of the verse, and I've copied it over to the D section, which is going to be on my chorus. Now, let's go into that D section. Now, when a drummer is playing a song, when it comes to the chorus, they don't suddenly change to a completely different beat with different timing that isn't the same as the guitars and everything are playing. Usually, when it comes to the chorus, the drummer keeps the same kick, drum and snare beat, but they switch the pattern a bit to make it more busy. They'll switch to the ride or switch to the toms to keep time. They'll put a few extra kicks in. They'll get a bit louder, right? So essentially, it's the it's the verse pattern upgraded for the chorus to be busier and a bit louder or whatever. So this is section D, the chorus, with the 
same drumming as in the verse and intro. And now I can double tap on the icon here of the drum kit or I can touch on that drumming, then touch it again and do edit and it takes me back into the editor. And I'm just editing the drums for this section D, the chorus, and at the moment we've got the same drums as the verse there. So of course I'm going to switch the drummer to play the toms to keep time, like this. And I'm going to make the drumming slightly busier and slightly louder, just a little. And I'm going to bring in a percussion instrument that claps over the top, like this. And that's my chorus drumming done. Alright, so back to tracks. Okay, there's section D with the new drumming, upgraded or tweaked for the chorus. And now we'll go back to all sections. And I've got intro drums, first drums, first drums, all those sections of the same drumming, and then chorus drumming, which is different with the toms keeping time and the clap added, right? So that's now all the bits of the drumming that I need to build my song from. Because I can copy the verses over to make my next verse, and I can copy the chorus over to make my next choruses and what have you, right? So now I can get the guitar down over these bits and then we can copy them over to build the rest of our song. So, um, to make a new track, we use the plus down the bottom here, the plus. Now, if I was gonna record an acoustic guitar here, I'd go and find the mic and I'd choose instrument, choose a preset for my acoustic guitar. This is the input level. I can use the monitor and hear myself as I play. And with the monitor on, this is the level that you hear the mic against the music while you're playing. Okay. Um, and then you'll be ready to record your acoustic guitar. But let me go back to tracks with the track icon. Right, there's the acoustic mic track set up, ready to record. But we're going to record with the acoustic guitar through the built-in mic of the iPad through an amp rig to get an electric guitar sound. So to get rid of a track, you touch on it and delete. Make a new track with a plus down the bottom of the left hand column and this time I'm going to go for an amp. I'm going to go for distorted All right, and there's my amp. Now I can play through this amp via the mic with the acoustic guitar and it'll give me a, a distorted sound on that acoustic as when it plays back. right? But the thing is if you're recording like that using the mic to record through an amp modeling rig to get electric guitar down if you use the monitor to hear yourself as you play, if you're using a very distorted amp, it will squeal like crazy. So I'm going to choose uh, punk rock, roll off the gain a bit, and let's hear that. Oh, the pedal, take the fuzz off, back to the amp. Monitor on, let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not squealing too much. Just turn the game down a smidge more. And after we've recorded the guitar, we can switch the amp to be anything we want, as distorted as we want, right? Back to tracks. There's my guitar track set up, ready to record, and it's going to re receive the signal from the mic of the acoustic guitar. Okay, so here we go. Let's get the guitar down. I'm going to record the guitar over the intro, verse, verse, and the chorus, and then we can build the rest of our song from that. Now, bear in mind, we're now recording over all sections. You can choose any individual section like D and record over that and only that section, or you can choose all sections and record on a track over multiple sections, like I'm gonna do now. Okay, so, oh, so, let's do it. Here we go.
And that's it. I've recorded the guitar over all of the sections. You can see that blue, that's where I've recorded. And when it gets to the end of the individual recording section, or in this case, a bunch of sections, it drops out of record at the end. That's it, we're done. We now go back to tracks with the track icon. And there's my recorded guitar. And um, we get to some basic mix controls by dragging this gray side panel out with that little light gray handle there. That just gives us access to simple volume, solo and mute. So I'll just lower that guitar down a smidge. And there's the guitar with the drums. Okay, now I can double tap on the amp, the picture of the amp on the track, header, go back to the amp, and now I can choose a different sound or tweak the amp I've got. Uh, let's try some of these different ones. Let's try modern metal. Of it. I can change that afterwards. Maybe a bit less drive on all of it. Okay, back to tracks. There's my electric guitar. Just lower it down a smidge more with that new amp. Okay, done. All right. Okay, now. We've got the guitar down for the intro, verse, verse and chorus. And what we're going to do is copy those bits over to create our second verse and second chorus, etc. Um, and when we, for example, copy this, these two verse sections over, it will copy the guitar with it, the audio here of the guitar with it, right? But before we get into copying over those verses and chorus to make our next verses and choruses and make the length of our song, we need to get a bass down right now. Again, if I had a preamp, I could plug a, a real bass in, use a bass modeling uh, amp and play real bass along with my song and put a real bass down, but I don't have that. I could try and play some bass on the acoustic guitar, uh, but I'm gonna actually use an instrument for the bass. So, do track with that plus down the bottom. And we're going to go with the bass. This is sample bass. Choose notes. And you play the fretboard. You know? Like that. You can set the fretboard up to be whatever scale you want. All right, there are different guitars to choose. I'm going to go with the precision. Right, now it is very hard to play, you know. like that. So what I'm going to do is pencil my bass pattern in, but to do that, first I need to play at least one note and record it to make a, to make a MIDI region with a note in it that I can then go into and pencil in and edit to create my bass pattern, right? So again, we are going to be recording over all the sections like this, but I'm only going to record the first bar. Just I'm going to record one note, so double tap on that bass instrument to get back to that. I'm just going to record one note, one bar, and then stop. Manually hit stop. Like that, and then hit stop. I hit stop manually, and I've just recorded just this little first green bit. That's where I've recorded out of the entire all sections, right? So now back to tracks. And there's my little bit of bass recording there. Right, but now I've got an actual MIDI region, and we can zoom in by pinching and expanding our fingers. Little MIDI region there, which is two bars long, look. Okay, and now I can touch that region, touch it again, if, if I don't bring up that many, touch, touch again, and edit, takes me into the MIDI editor. All right, now there's the MIDI editor. Look, we're looking at the two bars we've got of those two notes. Now notice there's a pencil padlock up there. With it locked, you can take any note, move it in time, get the end, change its length, longer or shorter, and change its pitch. Right? But you can't pencil in notes. To pencil in notes, you open the padlock, then you can 
Ooh. pencil in a note, pencil in the note, touch it again, deletes, right? So this is not this is not such an easy bass line to do. Uh, that's the opening note. And then that'll be the second note there. Let's touch on it again. Velocity it's a bit loud, but turn it down a bit. I'm just getting the timing of the first notes. Right? Okay. Um, have I got this right or should it be like that? Yeah, that seems right, and then something like that at the end. Yeah, that's the one. Right, let's make these longer. Oh, by the way, when you touch and hold the end of a note, it zooms in automatically. You just hold the end of a note, and then you get 64th grid to snap to like that. So touch, hold, boom, like that. Touch, hold, boom. Let's hear that. Yeah, there we go. And then these three touch on the end of any of them make them all just a 64th longer so i can lasso by touching on the background the box appears lasso a group of notes or i can just tap on the background and do select all like that okay so there's the bass okay done i click done up i'll touch done up at the top right there to get out of the editor there's my mini pattern for the bass over two bars. Now, just one thing, I'll touch on that pattern again. Settings, I'll just lower the velocity of all those notes, which give me a slightly softer bass with less sort of thumping attack at the start. Right, done. Copy that by touching it, touching it again. Copy, play it to the start of bar three. Touch to deselect, touch to the right of the playhead, paste. Touch to the right of the playhead, paste. Touch to the right of the playhead, paste. And there is eight bars of bass over my intro. Okay, now the bass is exactly the same in the verse because the intro and the verse is the same so lasso those four two bar blocks of bass making eight bars across the whole of the intro in total they're all highlighted touch on any of them touch again copy them all play it to the start of the verse touch to the right of the player paste them all in for that half of the verse play it to the second start of the second half of the verse touch to the right of the player paste in again there's the bass of my intro, verse, verse. Right, same bass, same drums, same guitar all the way across. Now, the chorus, the chords change. So what I'm going to do is take the last little bit of bass, touch it, copy it, put the player to the start of the chorus, section D there, touch to the right of the player and paste that one little bit of bass in. Then we're going to go to our sections and choose section D, just the chorus, and then we're going to redo the bass now to fit the new chords of the chorus. So touch on that. We're looking just at section D now. Look, just section D, just the chorus, right? So touch on that bit of bass, touch again, edit. Now it changes key here. So I'm going to get touch, select all, and then go. By the way, you pinch and zoom in or sorry, out or in by expand, uh, contracting and expanding your fingers and that's the same for vertical or horizontal. So all the notes highlighted and we're going up. Um, I think it goes to G. Is it G? And 
this next half goes up to A. So boom, boom, boom. Done. Touch that, touch again, copy, play to the start of the next two bars of the chorus, touch to the right of play, playhead, paste in, touch on that region, touch again, edit. Okay, now we're in the editor, we can see both of those two bar bits of bass. This is the first bit over those two bars, and then this is the second bit I just copied and pasted over, and then it changes here, so let's grab all this. Um, so this is the da 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 like that. Let's do the whole thing. Here we go. Done. Okay, now let's copy all that, drag over those and select them, touch, touch again, copy them both, play to the start of the second half of the chorus, touch to the right of the play, paste them in. And at the end of here, I'm going to make that note at the end of the final bit of bass just go up instead. So touch on it, edit, and right in that very last pattern, we're going to go. Oh, nah. If you ever do anything wrong, you've got this undo arrow there. You touch it and it will undo the last thing you did. I just deleted a note by mistake. This will undo, undo, undo every time you touch it. It's really, really useful. Real lifesaver that. So we're going to get for the final bit. Da, 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 da. Let's just have that extend out. Come on, extend out just a little bit, a little bit more, like that. So that'll be the last bit. There's all my bass over the chorus. Let's hear it. Done. That's. The bass done for the chorus. Go to my sections, all sections, and there we got it. So there's all my sections now. Intro, verse, verse, chorus with the guitar and the bass all done for each of the sections. The intro and the two verses are the same, and the chorus, different chords, different bass, different drumming, right? So now we're ready to copy these bits over to make the linear length of our song. So we go to sections. Now, there's D. That's my first chorus. Intro, verse, verse, chorus. So what I want to do is I want to copy B and C, my first verse, after D, my first chorus. So I get B, duplicate it. That duplicates B bolts it on after D as E. Then I get the second half of my first verse, C, and duplicate that, and it bolts it on at the end after E. So I've now got intro, verse, verse, chorus, and then B and C, the first verse, have been copied over after D, the chorus, as section E and F. That's my second verse. Then we're going to duplicate the chorus, bolts it on the end after E and F, my second verse. Now that's my second chorus. And after that chorus, we're going to go into the guitar solo. And the guitar solo is going to be played over the verse. So I get E, duplicate, it bolts it on the end. F, the second half of my second verse, duplicate, it bolts it on the end. So now I've got intro, verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus, 
verse, verse, but there's going to be a solo over that. And then we're going to end on three choruses. So G is my uh, second chorus. Duplicate, G, again duplicate, G, again duplicate. And I've duplicated G three times at the end as J, K, and L at my last three choruses. Now if we go to all sections, we're now looking at everything. Intro, verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus, verse playing for the guitar solo, verse playing for the guitar solo, back to the chorus, 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 and we'll fade out on that last chorus. Right, and there it is. That's the structure of my song, done. So now I can get the vocal down across it. So new track, find the mic, voice. Again, there's presets you can choose. This is your mic input level. You can use the monitor. And if you do, this is the level you hear the mic against the music, right? Okay, so back to tracks. There's my vocal mic track set up. I'm gonna be recording across all these sections, right? Now what I could do is I could record just over the verse, verse, chorus, and second verse, then copy my first chorus vocals over to the next chorus and the final choruses. But I'm just going to sing it all the way through, right? So, mic track, hit record, here we go. Song on the iPad Make a song on the iPad, yeah Make a song on the iPad Make a song on the iPad, yeah Make a song on the iPad First verse on the iPad, yeah Make a song on the iPad First verse on the iPad, yeah Nah, yeah, this is my song My song Second verse on the iPad, yeah. Second verse on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. Second verse on the iPad, yeah, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. Second verse on the iPad, yeah. Nah, yeah, this is my song, my song. hit stop there manually that'll do back to tracks and there's my vocal recorded uh, I've just recorded the verse verse chorus second verse and second chorus and now I can take the chorus from here or from here and copy it over to the final three choruses right so let's do that uh, which is the better chorus let's say a chorus D nah, yeah, this is my song my song, nah, yeah, this is my song, my song, yeah. Let's hear the second chorus. Yeah, nah, yeah, this is my song, my song, and I, yeah, this is my song, my song, yeah. Well, I'll use the last one there, right? So, that's the start of the chorus there. Right, so touch on the audio with the player snap to the start of that chorus. Touch on the vocal audio, split, drag that scissors down, and I've cut it, isolating that chorus from the rest of the vocal. Pinch to zoom out, snap that to the end of the chorus, touch it, copy. Right, there's my guitar solo, guitar solo. That's the start of the last bit of choruses player to the start of this chorus block, touch to the right of the player, paste the chorus in, and then um, paste the chorus in, and then the final one, paste the chorus in. Now just go to here, zoom in, 
let's just grab that and just bring that handle out just a little get that little look there's a little opening bit of phrase there let's see that actually we don't really need that you don't hear it here we go this is my song my song yeah this is my song let's just zoom in where the two join yeah that's all right it'll do right so there you go there's all my vocals let's go to the start and just zoom in I don't need this opening bit so I'll drag get the handle and drag the start handle back snap it to the start of that verse like that right and there we are there's my vocal right bring this out just lower the vocal a smidge make the song on the iPad make the song on the iPad yeah make the song on the iPad that's it that's a basic song just all thing now that we need is the guitar solo over this bit so we can duplicate a track get the guitar track touch it on, on the the graphic of the amp touch it again duplicate that track now we've got a second electric guitar track I can play through with the mic play it to the start of the guitar solo section now when we're recording over all sections like this more than one section I can put the player to anywhere I want and when I hit record it will back up one bar give me a f one bar counting and going to record wherever the play has head is when I hit record so I'm putting it right at the start of the guitar solo uh, I want to get a little solo together It'll be something like um Something like that. Right, here we go. My song, yeah. Done. Hit stop manually. I'm not going to play it again. Um, back to tracks. There's my little guitar solo. Okay, it's a little bit late because I'm. There's a little bit of a delay when I'm recording. Let me just drag that forward. To drag audio very finely like this, what you do is you pinch and expand your fingers to zoom in, zoom in, and one more time. You'll see this snap to grid off, and now I can slide my audio without it snapping and just line it up. I just—it was slightly late because I'm hearing the drums slightly late um, because um, there's a delay when I'm capturing because um, I'm capturing on on the desktop. Right, let's hear that. My song, yeah. That'll do, that'll do, pig. We're just showing the basics of how you get a song together and not getting perfection here. Okay, there it is. There's a complete song. Drums, rhythm guitar, lead guitar, bass, and a vocal. Right, that's all you need. Now, a few extras. Let's get a little mix together. And mixing is this mixer icon with three faders. That slides in the side panel with the mix controls. And whichever track you touch on, those are its mix settings on the left. So you've got volume, pan, solo and mute. The compressor, that's just bringing on more and more compression. Treble, cut or boost, bass, cut or boost. 
And down at the bottom is a reverb send and an echo send. And this is like a master reverb and a master echo that any track can send to. And above it, it says master effects. If I touch that, I can edit what my master echo is going to be. I'm going to leave it on default. And I can edit what my master reverb will be. I'm going to switch my master reverb to large hall. Done. Right. Okay. So there's my drums. Right. Now, this is my compression amount. And I said EQ, treble, and bass. But if we, above it, it says plugins and EQ. And if we touch that, now we can see the actual compressor and open it up. These are actual compressor settings. Threshold, ratio, attack. Uh, it's an auto release, so there's no release. And a mix control. And this is what's interesting, the mix control. Because normally a compressor is at, uh, it doesn't have a mix control. It, it's, it's at 100%, meaning the signal passes into the compressor, out to the other end of the compressor, 100%, the entire signal has passed through the compressor, is being compressed and comes out the other side compressed at the amount of compression you're adding. But this has a mix control, meaning we can blend in the compressed signal with the clean signal. So if I put it up at 100%, we're hearing only compressed signal. And now I can set up like very powerful compression on the drums, right? That's by wanging the ratio up really high, Back in the attack off a bit so that the transients have got thwack at the start and then messing with the threshold. Listen to this. Now that's that is really heavy compression. Too much on its own, but if we turn the mix, that's the amount of compression versus the clean signal down to nothing, we now hear clean drums. Then we can blend the heavily compressed signal in, and that's parallel compression, or the New York drum compression trick, and it gives power to our drums. Listen to this. So I'm going to give it a little bit of that parallel compression. That'll beef my drums up. Now, the other thing is, let me back out of that. That's the, we have the treble and the bass here for each track that we select. And this is a high shelf boost or cut and a low shelf boost or cut. So if I give it like high shelf boost and low shelf cut, then we go into plugins and EQ, close the compressor. We've got the visual EQ. Now that is the EQ that we just adjusted the shelf for back out here. Shelf boost for the treble, shelf cut for the bass. If we look at the EQ, open it up by touching on that symbol of an EQ curve, there's the EQ and you can see there's the high shelf I boosted and the low shelf I cut. But now we've got access to a mid band, right? So I can give my drums a bit of um, EQ here. Done, now on a nice beefy drums, lower the level down a bit. Okay, Un unsolo that. Let's mute the guitar, mute the vocal, and let's balance the bass with the drums now. Bring in the guitar. Okay, let's go and just get the solo balance. Now I'm going to give the solo some master reverb. A bit of master echo, let's hear that. A 
Okay, finally the vocal. I'm going to go into the plugins and EQ. I'm going to switch on enhanced tuning. My singing isn't the best. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Let's back out of that and unmute the, the, the mic. Back into the vocal track, back into the plugins and EQ. Um, let's get some compression going on the vocal. IPad. Make a song on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. First verse on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. First verse on the iPad, yeah. Nah, yeah, this is my song, my song. Okay, I've EQ'd it a little bit peaky in the treble. All right. Then I'm going to back it off in the mix a bit and give it some master reverb, a bit of master echo. So it's a bit, you know, because it's not the best recording because I'm using the little mic in the iPad. But here we go. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. First verse on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. First verse on the iPad, yeah. Nah, yeah, this is my song. That'll do. Oops, a little bit less reverb on the vocal. Song, my song. That'll do, that'll do. And then close the mix controls. Now, one last thing, a couple, a couple of last things. Uh, let me show you some extras. We've got the structure of our basic song, and now let's put some drum fills in, transitioning from different sections to different sections, right? So, double tap on the drum icon on the track header. Let's show you that again. I'm, I'm double tapping on this drum kit there. That takes me into the drum editor, and all the regions across the top are highlighted. So, like, that's the intro, verse, second half of the verse, leading into the chorus there. Now, I can pinch on this bars and beats line here, and expand. Okay, there is the last bit of drumming of the verse leading into that bit of drumming of the chorus. So I select that bit of verse drumming, turn up the fill control, it puts a fill at the end of this verse leading into the chorus. And when you put a fill at the end of a section leading into another section of drumming, it'll put a crash at the start of the following section. So that will have a fill at the end leading into the chorus drumming with a crash at the start. Here we go. And if you don't like the fill, just reselect and just tweak the control. And each time you tweak, you get a s different fills. Let's try something else. One more. Let's try that. Okay, and now this is the chorus drumming. Let's have a fill at the end of that, leading back into the next verse. So select the chorus drumming, turn the fill control up. There's a fill at the end of this, leading into that verse again. My song, yeah. song. Right, then we're into the second verse, first half, second verse, second half. Let's have a fill at the end of that, leading into the next chorus. So select that bit of verse drumming, put the fill control up. Second verse on the iPad, yeah. Nah. And then at the end of this chorus, put a fill leading into the solo. My song, yeah. Right, that's the first bit of guitar solo, second bit of guitar solo leading into the next bit of choruses, the final bits of choruses. So that's the last bit of guitar solo. Drumming, turn the fill up there. Let's have a fill at the end of that leading into the last choruses. Nah, yeah. And this chorus, a fill at the end, that chorus, a fill at the end, and the final chorus, well, we'll do a fade out of that so we won't hear the end of it, so no point putting a fill. That's that done, back to tracks. And now we've got fills. Okay, there's a fill out of the verse here, into that chorus, like this. First person we got back, yeah, nah. There's a fill at the end of that chorus, leading back into this verse. My song, yeah. There's a fill at the end of this verse leading into this chorus. Then we're into the there's a fill at the end of this chorus into the solo. My song, yeah. Solo, solo, there's a fill at the end of that leading into this chorus. 
And there's a fill at the end. Oops. Undo. And there's a fill at the end of this chorus, leading into that one. My song, yeah. And there's a fill. And there's a fill at the end of this chorus, leading into the final one. My song, my song, yeah. All done. We've got some fills in there now. Now I'm going to show you another thing now. We've got these following audio tracks that we recorded onto, recorded audio onto. The guitar, the rhythm guitar, the lead guitar and the vocal. So we touch the first audio track. It selects all the regions on that track. With all those regions highlighted, we touch on any of them. They're still all highlighted. Touch again and bring up settings. And now we're, we're adjusting the settings for all of those highlighted bits of audio on the rhythm guitar track. And we're going to switch on follow tempo and pitch. That's it. Done. Click or touch done at the top here. We switched on follow tempo and pitch for all of that rhythm guitar across there. Now the same for the solo. Select the piece of audio, settings, follow tempo and pitch. Done. Now the lead vocal. Touch on the track. All the audio for the vocal is highlighted. Touch on any bit of that highlighted audio. It's still all highlighted. Touch again. Settings. Switch on. Follow tempo and pitch. Done. Now you do that for all the audio you recorded. Not app, not if you, not any Apple loops you're using. Just audio you recorded on tracks. And now all of our recorded audio has been switched to follow tempo and pitch. And now we can go to the cog wheel for our settings. We can change the tempo of the song. I'm going to change it to 165. Make it faster, and everything speeds up or it slows down if you slow it down to follow. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song on the iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Bing, bang, bong. Right. So you can change the tempo to be anything you want. Obviously. The more extreme, you know, the, the further away from the original tempo you go, either slowing down or speeding up, the, the more and more artifacts you hear. But my original recording tempo was 158. So let's really go down in speed, really down, to 140. And it'll do it. Have a listen. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. So I actually want it a little bit quicker. I can have it at 165 or 4 which is six beats a minute faster. Done. Let's hear that then, there it is, look. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. Now don't forget you can use Apple Loops to augment the stuff you've recorded. Apple Loops are here. Right, you can choose instrument category or only looking at drums or bass or guitar loops or whatever yeah um, so I'm going to choose all drums and then genre house and then I can find a really thumping kick just doing boom 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 like that one with that much pitch and I'm going to drag that into my arrangement you just drag it in and let go wherever you want it to start so I'm going to drag it right to the start now that's giving me this thumping kick drum underpinning my whole music All right, like this which just gives it a slight little bit of a sort of contemporary edge takes it out of rock a little bit thing is though it's a very fast tempo we're at 164 tempo now right and that kick drum is going bump 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 listen to it soloed really fast so what i can do is i could pinch and zoom in and you'll see that there's the original one two three four kicks in that one bar pattern and then it's got ghost copies coming off it so i touch on that touch again settings and I can make it half speed now there'll only be two kicks per bar now let's hear that oh, taking out a solo 
Let's hear that with my drum kit. Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay, and then let's have one more loop. In the chorus here, um, I'm going to go out of the genre house, D tick house, go back to instrument, shakers, and. And by the way, you can hear these playing along. You just hit play, bring up the upper loops, touch on any loop, it'll play along in time with your music. Make the song on the iPad. Make the song on the iPad, yeah. Make the song on the iPad. Make the song on the iPad, yeah. Make the song on the iPad. So while I grab that maracas and drag it in and place it at the start of my chorus. So now there's going to be maracas, a shaker thing coming in at the chorus to augment the chorus like this. First person we got back, yeah. Nah, yeah, this is my song, my song. Nah, yeah, this is my pet. And again, if I wanted to, I could touch on that touch again, settings and try it at half speed. Don't know what it'll sound like. Here we go, let's try that. This is my song, my song, nah. Don't like that, so I'll undo with the undo arrow here. It should go back to its normal speed. Let's hear that. Yeah, so I'll just put those little extras in, you know, whatever you want, right? Give it a mix with the mix controls, da 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 da. And then finally. If you bring in the effects with that effects button there, that brings in these DJ style effects down the bottom with filters and things like that, you know. Yeah, all that dancey type, re you know, master effects. However, once the effects are open down the bottom here by touching that effects button, if you now bring in the mix controls, a visual EQ slides in, which you can switch on like that. Right Now, this is a master EQ over your final whole mix. There are no other effects over the final mix, only this EQ, but you can tweak the EQ of your whole mix. So, touch on that picture of an EQ curve. And I can now add a little EQ to my whole mix. Make the song on the iPad. Make the song on the iPad, yeah. Make the song on the iPad. Make you know, whatever I want. Right. Kick drum, I'm not entirely convinced it's working. What I'm going to do is put it back to normal time, not half speed. It'll be boom, boom, boom. Fantastic stuff, but there you go. That's the basics of how to get a song together on an iPad. You know, cheap and cheerful. Um, using just an acoustic guitar, a pair of headphones and the iPad itself. That's it. And we've got a little rock song going, right? It's not the best in the world. I'm, I'm not taking time to do it really properly. You know what I mean? I'm just going, oh, that'll do for the solo. Oh, that'll do for the vocal. You know what I mean? And we're recording into the little mic using an acoustic guitar and imitating electric guitars. In fact, I don't know what I'm going to do. Double tap on that amp. I'm going to change that to this um, Iron Fuzz sound, which is a bit more buzzcocksy indie. Uh, when I say buzzcocksy, I mean from the um, Spiral Scratch era. Uh, let's bring the mix controls in. It's a bit sort of honky and mid-range. Let's hear that. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song on the iPad, yeah. Make a song on the iPad. Make a song... Yeah, yeah, I like that guitar sound better. Right? 
And then you'd sit and listen, tweak the mix, tweak the mix, tweak the mix, you know, and bing, bang, bang, there you go. Oh, one last thing, the fade out at the end. Go to the sections, choose the final section, which is my last chorus, section L. It slides into place. We're just looking at that one section now, the final chorus. Touch the cogwheel icon and activate the fade out for this section. And now go back to all sections. And that final chorus will do a that final chorus there, everything under that will do a fade out. Here we go. This is my song, my song, yeah. This is my song, my song, and I this is my song, my song. That's it, right? Bing bang bong. This is amazing, this. I mean you know, when I was younger and you wanted to get demo songs together, the only thing you could use was a four-track Porter Studio cassette recorder. And you'd have to get a little cheap drum machine, make up your drums, record those down to one track, add your bass on the second track, add your guitar on the third track, and a vocal on the fourth track. And that was your lot. You know, sometimes with some of the more better uh, Porter Studios, you could bounce tracks down and then give yourself, you know, more a couple more layers to add. But... But a four-track tape record, tape port studio back in the day cost as much or more than this iPad does. You know what I mean? And GarageBand is completely free. It's completely ludicrous, this thing. It's it's insane. And you wouldn't believe the amount of sounds this has got in it. It's got, oh my God, like amazing strings, drum boxes, and, and thousands and thousands of loops, sample packs and everything. Uh, if you were doing grime or British hip hop, you get one of these and a preamp for the mic and you could turn out release quality products on it. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not. If your beats are up to it and you're spitting of your vocals, you've got it. Because it's all about the talent, right? You can turn out a finished release quality product on GarageBand on iPad if you've got a decent mic with a preamp to, put, to spit the vocal down. I'm not joking. It, it's amazing this thing right okay so that's that and let's just look at the final bits of saving and all that so there that little file icon there you touch that and it saves the song right you see it saving and there it is it's that one there you touch hold let go like if I tap on that just tap and it'll open it close it again with the file icon but if I touch and hold so it bumps like that and let go then I can delete, copy, duplicate, move it to another location if I've got, if I'm on a network or, or, or I've got an external hard drive plugged in because with iOS 13 you can plug external USB hard drives into your iPad now. Um, but the bit we want is, well, we can rename it here because it gets named as My Song. Um, so I'll call it My Song iPad Song. Right. Done. Oh, at the top right, done. Okay, my song, iPad song, there it is now. Touch, hold, let go, share. And project is to share it as a project that you can import into uh, Logic or GarageBand on your desktop. Ringtone is obviously, if you're messing around doing short little ringtone things, it will create you a ringtone file. But we want song. And then you can render off a master file in different MP3 qualities. Uh, Apple Lossless, which I think is AAC. All of those allow you to put in tags for the artist, composer and album. Then you have two uncompressed master file formats, uncompressed AIFF and WAV. And they're the ones you want for a, for a high quality master file. If you choose one, touch share at the top here. And then from here you can choose where you're sharing it. To AirDrop, send it as a message, send it as mail, render and send it straight to SoundCloud, to your box, whatever. If you press save to files, it will straight away start rendering it to the memory space on your iPad. Um, I don't have an external hard drive plugged in, so I'm not sure what the dialogue is to save it to an external hard drive connected to the iPad, but there'll be a way to do that once you connect uh, a little hard drive to your iPad. Okay, so and then you just, you just render off or share the master file from there, and that's it. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Amazing stuff, man. That is how to record a song, a demo, sing a songwriter type song, 
in GarageBand on the iPad and of course let me just touch to open that if we were doing an acoustic song then the rhythm guitar and any other guitar parts instead of using an amp I would have gone to a new track and chosen the audio recorder instrument and set it up for an acoustic guitar recording but there you go and that's how to do it just using a pair of headphones an acoustic guitar and the iPad itself. I hope that's useful. Uh, any questions, ask away and I'll see you for the next one.